the touch of our innocence is faded. Hey, hey. How's that Starbucks? I'm just telling you guys right now. The Starbucks pumpkin cream cold brew hits different. Now I don't I'm not I'm not a big dude into the whole pumpkin thing. Like I don't Yeah, I'm I'm not basic. It's uh yeah, it hits different. You know what? Let's get into a little background since this is my first one here. I have a 2013 F-150, as you guys already seen. It's the FX4 model. I bought it back in 2016 with 18,000 miles. We're up to 138,000. So I've had it for five years now. I don't know. I still absolutely love this truck. There's days where I think about getting rid of it, buying a Raptor, but I'm just not... I don't know. I, I think I need to worry about other things right now instead of going out and making a dumb purchase. It wouldn't be dumb, but just don't know if I need to make that purchase. I, I think uh, the, the future goal is I'm going to, but I just I need to get some other stuff set in financially before I go off and think about spending 50, 60 grand on a Raptor. And that's for a Gen 2. I'll probably get a Gen 2. I obviously am not buying a Gen 3 as much as they look badass. So this truck here... I pretty much, the background of it was, it was basically like a brand new truck. When I got it, it had the 22s, it had a fiberglass tonneau, it had all the blacked out emblems, it had the blacked out um, all the lights, recon lights everywhere. The two things that I did right away was I put NFAB Nerf bars on it and then I switched to one of the undercover tonneaus. I sold that fiberglass cap. At first, I kind of liked the fiberglass cap. I think the one that was on it was probably like the cleanest looking one that you can actually purchase for these trucks, but it's just not it's just not a good everyday item you're gonna want. And honestly, the fiberglass tonneau gave the truck just I don't know, it just wasn't it wasn't for me. Like I, it kinda looks cool. I just I don't know. I'm all about clean. Like if it's not clean looking, I just can't I can't. I can't even low key if you got one of them wallets I'm missing a screw fits perfect fits perfect hey get in your spot all right guys took a little sh some shots i wanted to use a different lens to do some b-roll footage the problem was i forgot my freaking nd filter now i could have adapted overcame i could have just cranked up my f-stop but then the problem is that takes away from the background blur and I just didn't really want to do that so I used the kit lens we'll see how that comes out I'm no professional photographer my seat belt is about to ding three two one wow it still hasn't yet What you get, it's a whole kit that I bought off eBay. This is all the old stuff. I already swapped it. I'm not trying to do a tutorial video on taking it apart, putting it in. There's like several other videos you can watch if that's what you're looking for. Um, you get a new media center, plastic pry tools, and basically those are just, you know, to ply up all the plastic pieces to make it easier. I didn't break anything. This is the factory screen and module. Um, and it's literally just two plugins that you plug in. One is the big one that here. One, this, there's one plug in here, and then I think the other one is for your navigation, if you do choose to do the navigation. Um, it comes with the USB the OBD2 cord, which is just so if you do need to hook it up and use Forescan for whatever reason. So the media center, literally, it just unplugs. It's pretty simple swap. Let's get it here. So literally... You just take a screwdriver, pry it up, pops out pretty easy. Plug in the uh, adapter harness that they come with, that it comes with. Literally plug this in, put it down, boom. Have an iPhone cord or whatever, Android. But that's so you can use Apple CarPlay. CarPlay is not wireless. You do got to be plugged in. Just 
pretty normal on the not so newer vehicles. So that's easy. So that's what this old one is, the old media center. Um, that's for the factory navigation before. So it's literally, I think four items you get with it. it comes with a tool if you don't have it. I think I still needed to use my own tools, but yeah. So basically from there, I'll give you guys just a quick little rundown. Um, drop your glove box, three screws underneath the glove box to pull the airbag out. I didn't even unplug the airbag. I just actually popped it out, kind of moved it to the side. I think there's a screw here and maybe a screw here. Then you can pop this out. And then I think there was another one or two screws. Basically, I think there's a screw, like four screws in here um, that are holding this piece on. So I'm not familiar with the other center consoles, but like mine, it just literally pops right out. So that's easy. Pop this out. Um, you pop this out with a screwdriver and I think there's two screws under here. And then that allows you, once you get these other four out, um, you can pop this out and then it's literally four screws that holds the screen in. Pop them four screws out. Once you pop them screws out, screen comes out, unplug it. The little brackets, you just swap it over to the new display and I mean, you're literally, I, I did get the navigation. So you just plug an antenna in, you undo this right here. The navigation antenna, just three M adhesives right up top. I mean, it is, it doesn't really get any simpler than that. And yeah, it's, it's a great upgrade. The only thing that is a little quirky is switching like menus when you're going like different sources. Um, you just got to kind of remember where you're going. And other than that, the only other thing that is a little quirky, kind of, I don't know, you'll get used to it. But so for instance, I use, I do have heated and aired, air conditioned seats um, or like even here. So like, say you're just in your temperature the, and then again, this is not a big deal, not a big deal at all. But when you're adjusting your temperature, you see it up here for driver and passenger. But now let's say, okay, I'm going to plug in CarPlay. So I'm going to plug in, it's going to switch over here to CarPlay. Boom, shows up, hit Spotify if you're using the app. And then like, okay, for say I want to adjust climate, like I'm adjusting it right now, but I don't know what it's at. Or like heated seats, you know, you got to go here, forward, climate, and then you're back here to do your heated and AC seats. So, and if you're not connected through the cord and you're just running Bluetooth to your phone or from your phone to this, it's a little laggy. I mean, it still plays fine, but like switching songs, things like that, it's a little laggy, but it's not, it's not the end of the world. All your factory controls, media, stuff like that still work 100%. Camera works. I mean, all functions work. If you want to do, like say you put this in a vehicle and you don't have the climate controls like I do through here. I think through Forescan you can eliminate this. Um, but I do have all of this phone. Um, but like I said, it's just you get kind of used to switching screens. Um, other than that, pretty good upgrade. It is still a matte finish screen, at least the screen I have. So what I did was I just ordered a couple screen protectors off of Amazon to give it kind of that like gloss look. Other than that, it's uh, I mean, it's not a must update, but I think the screen is a little more responsive than the the Sync 2 screen that I have. So, yeah, overall, I think it was about 650 bucks with tax. I'll post the eBay link. I'm not really affiliated or selling it or nothing like that. It was just the one I purchased. And the cool thing about when you purchase it off of them, you give them your VIN number and they're going to give you, there's two different screens. They're going to make sure you have the right screen, which this is the recess screen to make it fit correctly. And then they're going to program it already. So if you don't, if you piece this kit together, you're going to have to use Forescan and do it yourself. There's a lot of programming codes out there, so I think it's pretty easy. But yeah, they'll, they'll program it for you. So literally all I had to do was get my plastic pieces apart bolt it in, plug it in, plug in the new media center and the navigation antenna and good to go. I mean, it's, I didn't have to do nothing with Sirius. I already pay for that. It just works all automatically. 
Um, I just had to repair my phone, of course. So if you guys are looking to do an upgrade just to give your car that newer feel, or you just want a little more responsive screen with the CarPlay Android Auto, or I think that's what it's called, yeah, go ahead. Definitely do this. Um, yeah. Definitely do this update. If you guys are looking to just upgrade the feel of your vehicle, or maybe you're just a techie person, you just kind of like messing with new stuff, or you want that CarPlay, Android Auto, definitely upgrade. It's worth it. I don't I don't have no regrets. So, on that note, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'll come back with more. I'll probably just keep it truck related. I do bass fish a lot. I got the bass boat in there, but honestly, I'm just not into the whole, there's so many people making bass or like fishing videos that like it's just completely saturated. So I probably won't do that. I'll probably just keep that as my hobby to not worry about making videos. I like to just tournament fish. So if you guys want more videos, hit that subscribe button. I promise you I'm going to come back with more videos. Um, and it's going to be truck related. So I better see you guys on the next one. Peace.